what is up everyone Ron back again for another video and I am in my car and I am actually waiting for a uh... oh there's a dog out here oh cute hi puppy check this out little puppy dog I don't know where he went but yeah he's checking out my car here all right I don't think I have to worry about him as I wait for uh, my girlfriend's daughter um, from the school bus. So, anyways, today I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, a couple things that have been on my mind. And um, now there has been a lot of backlash uh, about my videos of the past. Let's say about a year ago, I've had videos from Johnny Unlow. Uh, and basically it's been, I don't know, maybe a year and a half since I posted the video, maybe a little bit less. I don't know, but he put, uh, it was a video about, um, end times itis and, uh, I've been getting a lot of backlash about from, from commentators saying you are, uh, you need to repent. I've heard that you need to uh, get this doctrine out of uh, uh, get your mind off this doctrine. This is false doctrine. This is a false prophet, and so forth. And so I just want to kind of give my two cents, basically, on Johnny and those teachings. And a lot of people again are are going to be either for or against. No matter what, not all Christians are going to be. In favor of this whole entire thing the narrative of we win no matter what we're victorious God is victorious there's a kingdom age coming there is a uh, time of the seven mountains where uh, the mountains of politics and television and entertainment and sports and so forth as many mountains that uh, are involved in the seven mountain mandate uh, and the fact that things, and, and what most people have been taught is that things are bad, things get worse, things get worse, things get worse. Jesus comes, he rescues us, and that's it. We spend seven years in heaven during the tribulation, and then we come back victorious with Jesus during uh, the end of the tribulation. Uh, during that time, we will come back. And reign, rule and reign with him for 1,000 years. Um, so, and I've been listening, of course, to the uh, Johnny Inlow teaching. And he is far from that narrative. Uh, and I know, yes, the Bible clearly says uh, reference. And I, again, I've studied as much as I can of Matthew 24 and so forth. I've talked about my dream that I had. Now, just like you, I believed all of that. I believed that uh, things get worse, things get worse, things get worse, and we end up losing, we end up being martyrs, and we end up getting raptured out of here, rescued, because God's going to say, well, I've had enough, I think I'll rescue my church, and call it done. I hate to tell you this, guys, but that is not the God I know. The God I know is a victorious God. The God I know hates to lose. Just let, just keep that in mind for as, as I go on with this video. Um, the God I know uh, doesn't lose, okay? And neither will his church. Jesus clearly says, I will build my church so the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And when you hear that being said, and you take a look at the church today and you say to yourself, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of hell has been pretty much running it for the last several thousand years. I'm <laughs> again, I'm just not really, you know, I'm, I'm being like maybe a little hyperbolic because I know that all churches are like, OK, stop typing. Not all churches are like that. I get it. Uh, you know, the glorious church of which I've talked about in all these videos has not come to pass. 
I've also heard that um, during the seven-year tribulation, there will be revival. Yes, that's true. There will be. I think it's 144,000 people revival. I think that's going to be the restoration of the, the Jews in which they will be uh, known to their Messiah, Jesus Christ. Um, I, I, I believe there will also be Jews who will also be, you know, uh, born again and saved before that time, many that will during the one billion soul harvest in which that is about to take place. Um, and so, it, and, and I could go on and on about that, but again, we're talking about something that I believe and, and truly believe it because it really got, God put it in my heart. Not only that, but he put it in a dream that I had uh, of what, you know, the real rapturous, victorious rapture will happen. Because I think the rapture won't be a time of, you know, death and destruction. But I think it'll be a time of uh, victory. It'll be a time of a victorious point. And what I saw in my dream was glorious time. It was not uh, at all a uh, dark, disturbing time in what you might think it is. That being said, um, which we are which we're currently in right now, we're in that time. Yes, I see that they're coming up with technology of microchips. I see that they're coming up with uh, different, you know, talking about the New World Order, talking about uh, a satanic agenda and what the world is. I see it. I absolutely do see it. I see Klaus Schwab. I see Noah Harari. I see the false prophet. Blah, blah, blah. All that. Yes, I see that. I'm not stupid. I see it all. Okay? But a lot of people are still convinced that we just are, we, we lose that we lose this battle, we lose the war, we get raptured, we just get taken away, and that's it, that's all. That's that's what that's what I believed my whole life, and I'm beginning to truly, you know, definitely don't believe it now. And the reason why I don't believe it is because I believe in a victorious, glorious church that is about to be revealed. I believe that we're gonna enter a kingdom age in which we will um, be the light of the earth. The, uh, we will be the light and salt of the earth, as in Isaiah 60, in which he refers to that in that video, by the way, Johnny Inlow does, and he talks about that too. Um, because Jesus clearly says, and he even says it in Ephesians, I believe Ephesians 27, Paul says, that he is coming for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. I believe that's Ephesians 27. I don't have my Bible with me right now, so uh, don't quote me on that. But again, I'm just trying to, you know, trying, everybody knows that that is clearly what is said. Uh, without wrinkle, without spot, without void. And uh, I've looked at this and I've been like, the church is... Not even close. <laughs> Not even close. We're not there yet. And again, it's probably one of the biggest prophecies that needs to be fulfilled before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Do I believe the second coming of Jesus Christ? Absolutely. No doubt in my mind. I'm not. I'm not at all uh, denying the uh, the uh, narrative of the coming of Jesus Christ. Or the truth about the coming of Jesus Christ. I should say narrative. I think narrative clearly means that's something else. But So that being, you know, it's something to think about during these times. Um, glorious church. Um, one billion soul harvest. Remember these words. Uh, revival. Uh you know, so many things that a lot of people just don't want to believe that's going to happen. I call those the MacArthur people, you know, the people who believe in what John MacArthur's teaching. We lose 
It's what he's teaching. We lose. And he says that. He said that in a, in a, in a sermon. He says, sorry, folks, we lose. And it's like, I've never known God and the church to lose. I've never, I've never even like heard that even, even being said. So what I'm saying to you guys is this. I want you to really study scripture, study the Bible. Everything that people have said is in there. Yes. The book of Revelation. Yes, I know it. I know it well. Uh, the uh, Ezekiel 37, 38 of uh, Gog and Magog, all that. Yeah, I mean, that's all, uh, uh, it's all going to happen. I believe that with all my heart. But I believe that we are about to enter a time, I don't know how long of a period of time it will be, but it will be a time of glory. It will be a time of the glorious, victorious church. And it will be a time of, I believe it will be a time of peace and safety. And then, and then, the, uh, he will come for his bride. He will come with his, for his bride without spot or wrinkle. And um, that is the ecclesia. That is the church. That is that is going to be the time when he comes back. And so, or when he comes and takes us. Do I believe in a pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib rapture? You know what? I really don't know anymore. It's there's so many teachings on either one. Whatever I, whatever I think, it's going to be victorious no matter what. That he will come for his bride. Whether it happens pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, I don't really, you know, I don't really know. But, but I really don't care because I know that we have an assignment to do on this earth. We are to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. We are to proclaim Christ as the Messiah, as the Savior, as the uh only true way to heaven. We have to proclaim that. We have to proclaim that he is the son of God. And we can't just you know, twiddle our thumbs, wait for the rapture to happen, look up YouTube videos that uh, proclaim dates. Now, here's an, here, let, me talk about, let me go and talk about censorship here for a second. Do you notice that a lot of the doom and gloom prophets, prophecies, preachers and so forth never get censored on YouTube you never know you ever notice that think about that for a second why don't they get censored why don't they you know why don't why don't these guys ever get you know kicked off YouTube it's a simple answer because that is the narrative Satan wants you to believe that is the narrative that uh, that the devil has wanted you to believe because he does not want to see a glorious church. He does not want to see uh, people coming to the Lord, knowing the Lord. He does not want to see the billion soul harvest. And it doesn't matter if you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, if you're going, you know, he doesn't care about that. All he cares about is putting a stop. He wants this world so bad. He's going to put, he's going to put up every inch of fight he can against us and against God and against God's plan. And of course he uses uh, the media. He uses, uh, uh, he uses even preachers. He uses uh, the music industry. I'm going to make a video on that, by the way, very soon. Keep track of that. You're going to love that one. Um, and he uses YouTubers. He uses, he uses dreams I believe Satan gives dreams out to people. Uh, I believe Satan can come as a uh, as an angel. He could come as an angel. He could use his demons as angels. That's why you got to test the spirits. If you get visited by an angel, you know, and Kat Kerr has referred to this. She says you need to test the spirits and ask them, "Hey, who is Jesus Christ to you?" And if they can't answer, then you rebuke them in in Jesus' name because. They have to proclaim Jesus Christ 
as the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. I mean, it's that's and you know it's a true, legitimate, um, angel. So always test the spirits, guys. Always do that. Um, and a lot of people get mad at me about that. It's like it's what the Bible says. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness, it's it's just true. So. A lot of this has just been, uh, you know, and, and, and oh, my favorites are like these dreams. God gave me a dream. I saw this on a YouTube video. God gave me a dream of the exact day he's coming back. <laughs> and I'm laughing and I'm like, oh boy, here we go again. You know, another another date, another date set, another, uh, another uh, time where, you know, we're going to get out on top of the hill and just be rescued. That's what we're, that's what we're doing. Yep. No, I'm sorry, folks. That's not going to happen because nobody knows the day or the hour except the God, the Father himself. Okay? That is what the Bible says. And and again, I'm, I'm trying not to... I'm, I'm with righteous anger. With righteous anger with these, with, these, with these date setters and everything that is that is like insane. And that's that's what's referred to in the end, end times itis video of Johnny Enlow that I that I posted on here. That is what he's referring to because of the thousands of date setters that were out there the last uh, two thousand years have been utterly unbelievable, you know. And 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 Jesus clearly says to occupy until he comes. And what has what has the church been doing? They have been doing hardly bupkis you know you have people you have street preachers out there you have that yeah i mean great are they being successful no you see these street preachers out there uh who are like i i i truly believe they're they 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 have a calling that's great but there's got to be a way for them to not get you know they, they get in heated arguments and people are like throwing stuff at them and it, it, it's sad it really is sad this is a very dark disturbed world that doesn't believe uh, so many people don't believe in Jesus they just don't and it's either they have been hurt really bad in life or they just plain old just don't want to believe it I mean it's so sad they get mocked if you're a Christian and, and so many things and it's gotten so out of hand that it's just it something needs to be done about it and that is a simple thing called love, a four-letter word that a lot of people don't like to talk about is love. David Wilkerson spoke on love. And David Wilkerson was not really a uh he was a he was a pro revival, pro ecclesia, pro all of that during his life. And still people to this day just don't want to, you know, they don't want if you invite them to church. The only way you get people in the doors of churches now is offering them coffee, offering them a good light show during the worship service, and so forth. Not that I'm against it, okay? Not that I have anything against, uh, you know, strobe lights or anything like that. You know, I, I mean, in my church, they, they do that, and but it's not like, you know, it's not like a huge, humongous, like, display or anything like that. I think it just kind of represents the mood and shows the mood, but that's that's another video for another time. What I'm talking about is you get people, you know how you get people through the doors of a church is simply a harvest, healings, miracles, signs and make you wonder, as Bill Johnson would say. <laughs> that is how you get people through the doors of the church. That's how you build the ecclesia. You build the ecclesia by showing God's, power and glory and and it's coming it's coming it's going to happen you know god's not going to sit around and wait for us to just you know say all right we give up no we need to we need to get involved we need to pray we need to seek god for this moment in time in which we are going to see the glorious things happen we're going to see miracles like you've never seen before that's going to make the Isuzu Street Revival look like uh look like a, a picnic that's what we're going into that's what we're heading into like what I'm believing is what God's real showness of power or is that even a word I don't even know but is if God's real uh showing of himself 
displaying his glory on the earth. This is not time for the rapture, guys. I'm, I hate to tell you this, and I know I'm going to get a lot of backlash, but I don't care. I have an assignment as an Isaiah 60 to be the light of the world, salt of the earth. I have an assignment. We have an assignment to be that light in the darkness because there's lots of darkness right now and there's going to be even more before God shows his glory. It's going to, I believe we're heading into a really, really dark time, very, very, very temporarily, but it is going to be victorious at the end. And I, I, we should not live in fear. We should be staying in prayer. We should be staying with the Lord. We should be staying and reading our Bibles and, and, and sticking it out and, and giving God all the glory. And we're about to see amazing time. Anyways, that is my video for today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you. Yeah, she's here. Check that out. We'll see you in the next video. God bless all of you. Bye for now.